North Sea oil is a mixture of hydrocarbons, comprising liquid petroleum and natural gas, produced from petroleum reservoirs beneath the North Sea. In the petroleum industry, the term, North Sea, often includes areas such as the Norwegian Sea and the area known as, West of Shetland, the Atlantic frontier, or the Atlantic margin, that is not geographically part of the North Sea. Brent crude is still used today as a standard benchmark for pricing oil, although the contract now refers to a blend of oils from fields in the northern North Sea. History Topic eighteen fifty one to nineteen sixty three Commercial extraction of oil on the shores of the North Sea dates back to 1851, when James Young retorted oil from torbonite, boghead coal, or oil shale mined in the Midland Valley of Scotland. Across the sea in Germany, oil was found in the Wheats Field near Hanover in 1859, leading to the discovery of 70 more fields, mostly in Lower Cretaceous and Jurassic reservoirs, producing a combined total of around 1,340 cubic meters (8,400 barrels) per day. Gas was found by chance in a water well near Hamburg in 1910 leading to minor gas discoveries in Zechstein dolomites elsewhere in Germany. In England, BP discovered gas in similar reservoirs in the Eskdale anticline in 1938, and in 1939 they found commercial oil in carboniferous rocks at Ekring in Nottinghamshire. Discoveries elsewhere in the East Midlands lifted production to 400 cubic meters, 2500 barrels per day, and a second wave of exploration from 1953 to 1961 found the Gainsborough field and 10 smaller fields. The Netherlands' first oil shows were seen in a drilling demonstration at De Meent during the 1938 World Petroleum Congress. At at the Hague. Subsequent exploration led to the 1943 discovery by Exploratie Nederland, part of the Royal Dutch, Shell Company Batafsche Petroleum Machapige, of oil under the Dutch village of Schoenbeek, near the German border. Nam found the Netherlands' first gas in Zechstein carbonates at Coevorden in 1948. 1952 saw the first exploration well in the province of Groningen, Heron 1, which was the first to penetrate the lower Permian Rotligans sandstone that is the main reservoir for the gas fields of the southern North Sea, although in Heron 1 it contained only water. The 10 bore well failed to reach target depth for technical reasons, but was completed as a minor gas producer from the Zechstein carbonates. The Slochten 1 well found gas in the Rotligans in 1959, although the full extent of what became known as the Groningen gas field was not appreciated until 1963. It is currently estimated at approximately equals 96 times 10 to the power of 12 cu feet, 2,700 cubic kilometers, recoverable gas reserves. Smaller discoveries to the west of Groningen followed. Topic 1964 present the UK Continental Shelf Act came into force in May 1964. Seismic exploration and the first well followed later that year. It and a second well on the mid-North Sea High were dry, as the Rotligans was absent, but BP's Sea Gem rig struck gas in the West Sole Field in September 1965. 
The celebrations were short-lived since the Sea Gem sank, with the loss of 13 lives, after part of the rig collapsed as it was moved away from the Discovery Well. The Viking gas field was discovered in December 1965 with the Conoco, National Coal Board Well 49 one finding the gas bearing Permian Rotligan sandstone at a depth of 2,756 m subsea. Helicopters were first used to transport workers. Larger gas finds followed in 1966, Lehman Bank, Indefatigable and Hewitt, but by 1968 companies had lost interest in further exploration of the British sector, a result of a ban on gas exports and low prices offered by the only buyer, British Gas. West Seoul came on stream in May 1967. Licensing regulations for Dutch waters were not finalised until 1967. The situation was transformed in December 1969, when Philips Petroleum discovered oil in chalk of Danian age at Ekafisk, in Norwegian waters in the central North Sea. The same month, Amico discovered the Montrose field about 217 kilometers, 135 miles east of Aberdeen. BP had been awarded several licenses in the area in the second licensing round late in 1965, but had been reluctant to work on them. The discovery of Ekafisk prompted them to drill what turned out to be a dry hole in May 1970, followed by the discovery of the giant Forties oil field in October 1970. The following year, Shell Expro discovered the giant Brent oil field in the northern North Sea east of Shetland in Scotland and the Petronord Group discovered the Frigg gas field. The Piper oilfield was discovered in 1973 and the Statfjord field and the Ninian field in 1974, with the Ninian reservoir consisting of Middle Jurassic sandstones at a depth of 3,000 m subsea in a westward tilted horsed block. Offshore production, like that of the North Sea, became more economical after the 1973 oil crisis caused the world oil price to quadruple, followed by the 1979 oil crisis, causing another tripling in the oil price. Oil production started from the Argyle and Duncan oilfields in June 1975 followed by Forties oil field in November of that year. The Inner Moray Firth Beatrice field, a Jurassic sandstone, shale reservoir 1,829 metres deep in a fault-bounded anticlinal trap, was discovered in 1976 with well 11 thirtieths minus 1, drilled by the Mesa Petroleum Group named after T. Boone Pickens' wife B., the only oil field in the North Sea named for a woman in 49 metres of water. Volatile weather conditions in Europe's North Sea have made drilling particularly hazardous, claiming many lives see oil platform. The conditions also make extraction a costly process. By the 1980s, costs for developing new methods and technologies to make the process both efficient and safe far exceeded NASA's budget to land a man on the Moon. The exploration of the North Sea has been a story of continually pushing the edges of the technology of exploitation in terms of what can be produced and later the technologies of discovery and evaluation 2D seismic, followed by 3D and 4D seismic, sub-salt seismic, immersive display and analysis suites and supercomputing to handle the flood of computation required, the Gulf Fax oil field was discovered in 1978. 
The Snorre field was discovered in 1979, producing from the Triassic Lundy formation and the Triassic Jurassic Statfjord formation, both fluvial sandstones in a mudstone matrix. The Osberg oil field and troll gas field were also discovered in 1979. The Miller oil field was discovered in 1983. The Alba field produces from sandstones in the Middle Eocene Alba formation at 1,860 metres subsea and was discovered in 1984 in UKCS Block 1626. The Smorbuck field was discovered in 1984 in 250 to 300 meters of water that produces from lower to middle Jurassic sandstone formations within a fault block. The Snowvit gas field and the Dragon oil field were discovered in 1984. The Hydrun oil field was discovered in 1985, the largest UK field discovered in the past 25 years as Buzzard, also located off Scotland, found in June 2001 with producible reserves of almost 64 times 106 cubic metres 400 metres BBL and an average output of 28,600 cubic metres to 30 30,200 cubic meters, 180,000 to 220,000 barrels per day. The largest field found in the past five years on the Norwegian part of the North Sea is the Johan Sverdrup oil field, which was discovered in 2010. With further oil of the same field was discovered the next year. Total reserves of the field are estimated at 1.7 to 3.3 billion barrels of gross recoverable oil and Johann Sverdrup is expected to produce 120,000 to 200,000 barrels of oil per day. Production start is planned to happen in 2018. It is one of the largest discoveries made in the Norwegian continental shelf. As of January 2015, the North Sea was the world's most active offshore drilling region with 173 active rigs drilling. By May 2016, the North Sea oil and gas industry was financially stressed by the reduced oil prices, and called for government support. The distances, number of workplaces, and fierce weather push the 290,000 square miles (750,000 square kilometers) North Sea area to operate the world's largest fleet of heavy instrument flight rules (IFR) helicopters. Helicopters, some specifically developed for the North Sea. They carry about 2 million passengers per year from 16 onshore bases, of which Aberdeen Airport is the world's busiest with 500,000 passengers per year. <laughs> Licensing Following the 1958 Convention on the Continental Shelf and after some disputes on the rights to natural resource exploitation the national limits of the exclusive economic zones were ratified. Five countries are involved in oil production in the North Sea. All operate a tax and royalty licensing regime. The respective sectors are divided by median lines agreed in the late 1960s. United Kingdom – Exploration and production licenses are regulated by the Oil and Gas Authority following the 2014 Wood Review on maximising UKCS oil and gas recovery. Licenses were formerly granted by the Department of Energy and Climate Change DECC, formerly the Department of Trade and Industry. The UKCS United Kingdom Continental Shelf is divided into quadrants of 1 degree latitude and 1 degree longitude. 
Each quadrant is divided into 30 blocks measuring 10 minutes of latitude and 12 minutes of longitude. Some blocks are divided further into part blocks where some areas are relinquished by previous licensees. For example, block 1324 A is located in quad 13 and is the 24th block and is the a part block. The UK government has traditionally issued licenses via periodic now annual licensing rounds. Blocks are awarded on the basis of the work program bid by the participants. The UK government has actively solicited new entrants to the UKCS via promote Licensing rounds with less demanding terms and the Fallow Acreage Initiative, where non-active licenses have to be relinquished. Norway, the Norwegian Petroleum Directorate NPD website in English grants licenses. The NCS is also divided into quads of one degree by one degree. Norwegian license blocks are larger than British blocks, being 15 minutes of latitude by 20 minutes of longitude 12 blocks in a quad. Like in Britain, there are numerous part blocks formed by re-licensing relinquished areas. Denmark, the Danish Energy Authority website in English administers the Danish sector. The Danes also divide their sector of the North Sea into one degree by one degree quadrants. Their blocks, however, are 10 minutes latitude by 15 minutes longitude. Part blocks exist where partial relinquishment has taken place. Germany, Germany and the Netherlands share a quadrant and block grid. Quadrants are given letters rather than numbers. The blocks are 10 minutes latitude by 20 minutes longitude. Germany has the smallest sector in the North Sea. Netherlands, the Dutch sector is located in the southern gas basin and shares a grid pattern with Germany. <laughs> Reserves and production The British and Norwegian sectors hold most of the remainder of the large oil reserves. It is estimated that the Norwegian sector alone contains 54% of the sea's oil reserves and 45% of its gas reserves. More than half of the North Sea oil reserves have been extracted, according to official sources in both Norway and the UK. For Norway, the Norwegian Petroleum Directorate gives a figure of 4,601 million cubic meters of oil, corresponding to 29 billion barrels, for the Norwegian North Sea alone, excluding smaller reserves in Norwegian Sea and Barents Sea, of which 2,778 million cubic meters, 60%, has already been produced prior to January. January 2007. UK sources give a range of estimates of reserves, but even using the most optimistic, maximum estimate of ultimate recovery, 76% had been recovered as of the end of 2010. Note the UK figure includes fields which are not in the North Sea, onshore, west of Shetland. United Kingdom continental shelf production was 137 million tonnes of oil and 105 billion cubic metres of gas in 1999, one tonne of crude oil converts to 7.5 barrels. The Danish explorations of Cenozoic stratigraphy, undertaken in the 1990s, showed petroleum-rich reserves in the northern Danish sector, especially the central Graben area. 
The Dutch area of the North Sea followed through with onshore and offshore gas exploration, and well creation. Exact figures are debatable, because methods of estimating reserves vary and it is often difficult to forecast future discoveries. When it peaked in 1999, production of North Sea oil was nearly 950,000 cubic meters, 6 million barrels per day. Natural gas production was nearly 280 times 109 cubic meters, 10 trillion cubic feet in 2001. It continues to increase, although British gas production is in sharp decline. UK oil production has seen two peaks in the mid 1980s and the late 1990s, with a decline to around 300 times 103 cubic meters, 1 1.9 million barrels per day in the early 1990s. Monthly oil production peaked at 13.5 times 106 cubic meters, 84.9 million barrels in January 1985, although the highest annual production was seen in 1999 with offshore oil production in that year of 407 times 106 cubic meters, 398 million barrels and had declined to 200 131 times 106 cubic meters 220 million barrels in 2007 this was the largest decrease of any oil exporting nation in the world, and has led to Britain becoming a net importer of crude for the first time in decades, as recognised by the energy policy of the United Kingdom. The production is expected to fall to one-third of its peak by 2020. Norwegian crude oil production as of 2013 is 1 1.4 MBPD. This is a more than 50% decline since the peak in 2001 of 3.2 MBPD. Carbon dioxide sequestration In the North Sea, Norway's Equinor natural gas platform Sleipner strips carbon dioxide out of the natural gas with amine solvents and disposes of this carbon dioxide by geological sequestration. Carbon sequestration, while keeping up gas production pressure. Sleipner reduces emissions of carbon dioxide by approximately 1 million tons a year, that is about one nine thousandth of total emissions. The cost of geological sequestration is minor relative to the overall running costs. As of April 2005, BP is considering a trial of large-scale sequestration of carbon dioxide stripped from power plant emissions in the Miller oil field as its reserves are depleted. Topic: See also List of oil and gas fields of the North Sea Commercial offshore diving in the North Sea Carbon sink Category of oil fields in Norway Economy of Norway Economy of Scotland Economy of the United Kingdom Energy use and conservation in the United Kingdom Geology of the United Kingdom Geography of the United Kingdom List of oil fields Oil platform Subsea United Kingdom Climate Change Programme It's Scotland's oil